Okay, let's talk about rates, ratios, and proportions. And uh, this is an area that can cause some confusion with students because you study uh, all this pretty much together. You're not going to study portions without uh, studying rates and ratios. But uh, if you are confused about which one is which, well, I'm going to clear up that confusion now. So we're looking at uh, three different things here. Okay, one is a rate. One is a ratio and one is a proportion. But what we want to do uh, in this video is really, really make sure you understand the fundamentals of this stuff because it's absolutely critical in mathematics that you understand this, uh, especially if you're studying anything at the middle school level or beyond. So I'm going to get into this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Now, uh, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, algebra one, uh, geometry, algebra two. I'm gonna be launching pre-calculus here in about a week. But I also do a lot in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, uh, ACUPLACE or ALEX exam, CLEP exam, uh, maybe a teacher certification exam, maybe the ASVAB, um, and many other type of exams. All those exams have one thing in common. They have a lot of math on them. And if you don't do well in the math section, you do not do well on the exam. So let me help you uh, prepare. Just go to my site and uh, check out my full course catalog. If I don't have your exam, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with homeschooling. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool uh, learning system and then obviously help those of you who are having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you're truly serious about wanting to improve and learn mathematics, then you gotta be serious about this, and that is note-taking. So I've been teaching math for decades, and there's one thing that I can point to with consistency, and that is those students who take great math notes almost always do uh, excellent. And it's, you know, it's kind of common sense, right? Those students who are taking great math notes can only achieve that by being highly focused, engaged, paying attention, and that translates into uh, to mathematical success. Now, the reverse is true. Those students who like to do what? Well, they're distracted. They're looking at their cell phone. They're talking to their buddies. And then they'll kind of check in on the teacher from time to time. They'll be like, oh, yeah, what are you talking about? Okay, yeah, I got that. I got that. And they'll look at their cell phone. And they think that they're absorbing information, but in fact, uh, they are not. Okay, so if you're doing this, you need to stop because you're not going to be successful in math. And the more you do this, the further behind you're going to be. Okay, so uh, believe me when I tell you, if you want to be successful in mathematics, you got to take great math notes. Now, in the meantime, you can use my uh, notes to study as you're improving your notes. Those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find uh, the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, so if you think you know which is which, we got something here, we have something here, and we have something here. And now, you know, this wouldn't be too difficult to guess because you might be saying, okay, is this a uh, ratio or proportion? You know, you don't have too many options here. So uh, if you get um, these right, you can identify which is which in terms of a rate, ratio, and proportion but you don't really know why you got it right, well, then that's not good, okay? This isn't that difficult, so let's go ahead and get going and teach you uh, the fundamentals of rates, ratios, and proportions. Okay, first things first. The first thing we need to know about all this stuff, okay, whether we're talking about a rate, a ratio, or a proportion, is all of these guys here involve fractions, okay? Fractions. So that's the first thing. Okay, we're talking about fractions. So a rate and a ratio are a type of fraction, and a proportion is two equal fractions. So let me go ahead and just really uh, make this very crystal clear. Okay. All right. Now, some of you might be saying, uh, well, you said you were talking about fractions. I don't see some fractions. I see fractions down here, but this isn't a fraction. Well, this, in fact, can be written as a fraction. This is an example of a rate. So here we have 35 miles per hour. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, why is this a rate? Well, a rate um, oftentimes is used to describe like speed or velocity, but that's not technically why this is a rate. So let's go ahead and investigate this little thing right here um, further. 
So we have 35 miles per hour. So everyone's familiar with uh, this nomenclature, but let's write this as a fraction. So we're going to say, okay, this thing, this car is going 35 miles, okay, per. Now, that little uh, per word, okay, is associated with rates. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and write this down here so uh, we don't forget. The first one is a rate, and I'm going to explain to you specifically why, but just want to build up your knowledge here. So this word per is a uh, fraction bar. So we're just writing this 35 miles, okay, per is that little fraction bar, hour. But how many hours? One hour, okay? So this car goes 35 miles per one hour. So again, this is a rate, and now we have this expressed as a fraction. You might be saying, well, the numerator, I'm sorry, the denominator is one. Uh, this isn't a fraction because, you know, you're, most people are like, oh, this is a fraction. They don't think that this is a fraction. This is, in fact, a fraction. Now, most people are like, oh, yeah, this is a fraction, but we can write the number three, for example, as a fraction. You can write any number as a fraction just putting it uh, by putting it over one. Okay, so just to kind of clarify that. All right, so 35 miles uh, per hour. So now we have a fraction, but what's going on? Well, when we're talking about rates and ratios, we're talking about um, specific units of measure, okay? Now, let's talk about what this uh, fraction is measuring. Up here, it's measuring miles, okay? So this is distance, okay? And down here, we are measuring time. So we're comparing distance with time. Those two units of measure are completely different, okay? Distance and time, um, they have nothing to do with one another, right? So when you are comparing two numbers with different units of measure, you effectively have a rate, okay? And you'll always uh, use that word per. So another example might be like uh, a pump, it might pump out uh, 15 gallons per minute, okay? That would be 15 gallons. It pumps out for every one minute. So we're comparing what? Gallons, uh, which would be a unit of volume, and uh, time, okay? So anytime we have a fraction and you're comparing different units of measure, that is a rate. All right. So, and by the way, too, you'll have that little word per in there. That's pretty frequent uh, to see that, okay? All right, so now let's talk about the next thing we have here. And this is an example of a ratio, a ratio. And by the way, if you um, uh, are getting this, or if you already knew this, then that's excellent. Now, ratios use, the, uh, use a different word, okay? So in rates, we use the word per. With ratios, we use the word to, okay? So this right here, you might be saying, well, where's the units of measure? Well, we don't, we can write ratios like this. This is 1 to 20, okay? So 1 to 20. Now, we often express uh, ratios, this like this little colon uh, uh, notation, but it, it, you just need to know that this is 1 to 20, 1, and then the fraction bar is the 2 symbol. So if you hear uh, 2, okay, you're thinking ratio. Now, what is the difference between a ratio and a rate? Well, Remember, with the rate, you were comparing different units of measure, but down here, with the ratio, you're comparing the same units of measure. So let me give you an example. So um, a perfect example would be like a student-teacher ratio. So one teacher, okay, one teacher to 20 students. Now, some of you are already confused. You might say, well... You're, cause you're comparing different units of measure because you're talking about teachers and students. No, no, we're still talking about people. Okay, we're counting people or human beings, <laughs> if you will. Now, some of you might be saying, well, math teachers or teachers in general, you know, they don't classify as people or human beings. Come on now, you know, give, you got to give us a break, right? We're still part of, uh, you know, the human race. So anyways, but we're counting you know, people here. We're not counting, you know, distance and time, completely different units of measure. So this would be, uh, this is a pretty standard way to express, like, you probably have heard this before, how many um, students per one teacher. So that's the student-teacher ratio. It's a pretty common um, description in various schools and universities. So, hey, if you've got one teacher for 20 students in the classroom, student-teacher ratio, okay? So you got two, use that word too. But uh, let's just kind of 
and really make sure you uh, understand this. Rates, you're comparing two different numbers with different units of measure, ratios. Um, you're comparing two different numbers or two numbers, okay? You can have the same number uh, with the same uh, units of measure. You're measuring the same thing conceptually, okay? Another thing too with rates, you're using that word per, okay? And with ratios, you're using that word to. Okay, so now this leaves us to our last uh, little item here, and that is a proportion, okay, a proportion. All right, so what is a proportion? Well, a proportion is nothing more than two equal fractions. Now, we are talking about fractions here, okay? Rates and ratios are fractions. So uh, when we uh, discuss proportions, you know, we're thinking about fractions, and that's why we tie in rates and ratios. Now, one thing about um, proportions that is very interesting is when you have two equal fractions, by definition, that is a proportion. But when you have a proportion, you have this very cool property called the cross product. And sometimes it's referred to as the means equaling the extremes. But eh, I don't really like to learn use that terminology. I like to, I like to use the cross product. That's, to me, more descriptive. Because what it's saying is, if we multiply crosswise, okay, the values are going to be equal. So 1 times 6, for example, is equal to uh, 3 times 2. Okay, So when you have two equal fractions, the cross product will always be true. And this will allow us to solve all kinds of proportion problems. Let's say I have x over 5 is equal to 1 over 2. Okay, Well, how do I solve that? Well, I just use the cross product. I go 2 times x, all right, and that's equal to 5. So x will be equal to 5 halves. So when you're faced with these basic algebra equations like this, anytime you can identify one fraction equaling to another fraction, you can um, classify this as a proportion. Use the cross product to solve. Very, very important, and when you're solving a lot of these rates and ratio uh, problems, especially word problems, uh, very, very common in algebra to be able to kind of tackle these kind of uh, uh, type of word problems. They're everywhere. Uh, so if you're struggling with word problems, okay, uh, you know, oftentimes you're going to be dealing with a rate or ratio. Pretty typical, okay, especially in basic algebra. But if you knew all this and you're like, well, you know what, this video didn't help me out because I was a total expert in this. Anyways, well, if that's the case, then I must congratulate you with a crazy 1985 um, mohawk, okay, with a nice smiley face and an A plus and a 100%. And that tells me that you're definitely taking notes and you're on the right track, you're paying attention, or maybe you're watching a lot of my YouTube videos, who knows, okay? But good job, right? So if you understand rates, ratio, and proportions, then that's excellent. But the bottom line is, you know, in mathematics, if you're not paying attention, okay, you're not going to be able to check in and, and learn this stuff like in a piecemeal kind of way. Like, oh, I'll learn a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and a little bit of this. You know, you're not, you can't learn math kind of like a la carte. <laughs> you know, you go into the restaurant, you kind of like, give me a little bit of that and this and this. No, you got to pay attention to your teacher and you got to build your skills up. You know, just as you build a house, you got to lay a foundation and just take it one skill set at a time. But with that being said, I'm going to tell you right now, nobody should be having, nobody should be failing math, okay? Uh, there's just too much uh, good help out there, okay? Whether it's, you know, uh, help from my channel or someone else's channel or another website, okay? But you have to take the initiative to go out there and learn. So hopefully, you know, uh, you've thought this little video was a good little a review like you know what now I understand about rates ratios and proportions and if you can keep that in your long-term memory then I did my job so if that is the case please consider smashing that like button that helps me out and if you're new to my YouTube channel please consider uh, subscribing I've been on YouTube for like 10 plus years I think even over 10 years anyways I have like over a thousand videos basic to advanced mathematics my goal my mission my passion is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way Okay, we don't need to make this stuff overly complex, uh, but that doesn't mean I water things down. I try to explain things where people can understand, and then you can practice this stuff and really build up uh, your math uh, kind of skill set and toolbox, all right? Because mathematics is everywhere, and it's uh, very, very important that you understand this, okay? Especially, obviously, if you're some uh, kind of student right now, whether that be middle school, high school, college, um, or whatever the case might be. All right, so... 
again, please take advantage of the videos that I post. And if you're uh, subscribed, you'll see my new content. But my best math help will be within my uh, math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.